Yeah, I'm Dan. I work with Microsoft in Australia. Um, and I'm a, what's called an account technology strategist. So it's up to me to be thinking for everybody who I work with three years ahead, at least, to see where technology is going and how people can get ready for the future, whether that be with their platforms, whether that be with their productivity suites, or whether that's with the cloud, artificial intelligence, gaming, or any other of our technologies. Um, when we're looking at the future, and I look at you guys here, it's really important to think about uh, jobs of the future. So we're going to pick that up first off. And um, two things I want to draw your attention to. One is we're all living in a karaoke culture, right? Everything's too easy. Put your hands up if you can play a musical instrument. It takes a long time. Hey, that's brilliant. That's fantastic. Very creative. Keep on with that. But we're in a, a culture where things are actually quite easy in a lot of respects. So people get famous very, very quickly, and they can go on reality TV, and they can do things extremely quickly. So it's really important for us to think about when we're looking at technology and new um, kind of trends, that we get on board with that really quickly, but actually it takes time to learn some of these things. So take time, and Microsoft employees, well, if you, any of you want to work with Microsoft, we spend a lot of time um, spent on our own learning. So our own learning is very, very important. And then also, we are uh, technology is um, giving us a bit of comp uh, kind of, uh, what I, how can I call this? So, um, cognitive amputation, one of my colleagues calls it in, in work. And that means we kind of rely on technology quite a lot. So who's used Google Maps, for example? Pretty much everybody, right? Now, if you use that all the time, you become reliant on that technology. And then what happens when that kind of fails? So it's really important that we kind of learn to think for ourselves, but also why technology com companies do what they do, yeah? I can't take my battery out of my mobile phone, yeah? It's very difficult to service some other technologies like iPads or some Surface technologies that we produce because you've got to take it away to a distributor to fix, okay? So it's really important to kind of think about why technology companies do what they do. Some make a lot of money from advertising. Some, like Microsoft, make a lot of money to s by selling software. To, to businesses and companies. Um, but ultimately, it's our mantra to em empower everybody across the planet to achieve more without technology. So it's really important. It's not what they do, but it's how they do it. And having the skills, and that's why I've got that curry slide on there, because we can't even cook anymore, let alone make AI. You know, we, uh, sometimes cooking companies don't even trust us to actually make our own recipes. We actually got to follow. And it tells us in those packets, for example, exactly how many chilies to use. So where's the creativity in that? Where's the flair? Where's the inspiration when we're making food or making computer software? So just to give you a bit of a uh, kind of overview of where the jobs are, the, the slide on the right-hand side, and this is from uh, something which we've put together with the ACS recently, um, 100,000 job openings in cloud on the right-hand side. That's really, really important. Cloud technology is where things are going. If you think about, there was an announcement today, some of you may or may not have heard about the announcement from Google today, releasing a gaming streaming platform embedded inside YouTube using the cloud. Yeah, A lot of firms, and people might have talked about it today, like Uber and things like that, uh, are running cloud-based services and really driving innovation through the cloud. So everybody in this room thinking about using cloud, um, and I'll show you some examples of that in a second. Um, obviously, there's lots of jobs in technology. So think about what kind of um, companies you want to work in. Microsoft said on the right, how many jobs? I, I kind of went to indeed.com uh, a couple of weeks ago and found out how many jobs are in industry at the minute in Australia. So if you actually search for them in, with particular technologies, learning a range and broad range of technologies is quite important. Okay, but there's a lot of Microsoft jobs in New South Wales, which is important for you. Um, so what are the jobs I'm talking about? So these are, these are a couple. Um, with Microsoft at the minute, cloud solutions architect. So that's somebody that goes into a company and says, how can we solve for your problems for the future? So they might go into a medical um, company or into the government and talk about how you could fit together all of the cloud pieces to kind of uh, come up with a solution and solve problems. Customer success managers, really important that people go in and speak to the uh, customers, whether it's a school, whether it's a uni, whether it's a research scientist, whether it's a games developer, and we, we say, how can we make you a job better? And how, what tools do you need to become more successful? Technical solutions professionals, 
all of the companies, uh, whether it's Google, Microsoft, Apple, people go very deep in certain technologies. So there's people that do a lot, for example, in the medical field, in genomics, uh, people with us that work uh, heavily in identity, in cloud security, in cyber security. So there's a whole heap of jobs in there. But there's also jobs around, there's the technical jobs, but inside Microsoft, for example, we've got people who need to uh, be kind of marketing our company and financial people and legal people. Um, so it's really important that your design and your creativity and your flair for your industries you're interested in, whether you want to become a vet or a nurse, that it all connects together and you kind of drive that. Um, data scientists are a very new career. So if you're doing maths and you're looking at crunching big numbers, data's coming from everywhere now, yeah? From our cars, from a whole range of kind of tools and technologies. So what do we do, how do, how do we crunch the numbers? And we need data scientists to do that. And there's a whole heap of other things that, that, are, that are coming on uh, line, jobs that haven't even existed yet. So keep your eye out and try to drive for some of those uh, careers. One of those is data science, and just to illustrate you where you get the money, if everybody wants to earn a lot of money, right? So this is where we see quite a lot of money at the minute, especially for people who are interested in maths and statistics and computer science. It's called data science, and that's where we get all of this uh, data in, okay? And then you got data and descriptive analytics. So what happened? So that's like in Aplan, right? You do your test, and it says, oh, what happened there? You had whatever score. You do your HSC, you've got whatever score. But when you get lots of that data in, you can start to diagnose why you kind of maybe got a low HSC result, for example. But then you can use um, machine learning and AI to predict the future. When you've got lots of data sets, you can actually predict what will happen. And that's what's happening at the minute. Last year, when I stood up and did this talk, we had a, uh, there was a, I think it was a Tesla car, uh, a self-autonomous testing car that ran somebody over and killed them in San Francisco. Um, and all of that testing and analytics is really, really important. So people who are earning quite a lot of money at the minute are looking at the data science field and the data science jobs because you can actually start to not only predict what will happen, but then prescribe how to make it better, see into the future using data. And that's where the, the jobs of the future are at the minute. So it's kind of an interesting one. Machine learning, really, really important, but you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that. So I'm gonna roll a little video, I won't play it all, but I'll just show you what we're doing with some school kids in um, Adelaide. Well, we just built a system to predict breast cancer. We're being highly innovative in the classroom by trialing new tools and we're redefining the learning and the learning process in the classroom. To me, that's breaking new ground and it's, and it's exciting. Machine learning and artificial intelligence is one of those things that you know it just can unlock so much potential. These sorts of tools are really starting to become more accessible to a, a wider variety of people. Building the new tools is really only one part of it. The other part that I think a lot of people overlook is that you actually have to teach people to use these tools. When Liam came to me with sort of the project he was working on in the Innovation Centre around machine learning and learning analytics, and he said, look, this is, this is Azure, this is um, the learning analytics and the machine learning, and this is some of the processes that we can work through. And I was interested, you know, it's such a powerful tool, and for it to be easy to use to me didn't really make much sense. But when he led me through it, I thought, you know, actually, I think some of our younger girls could probably use this as well. The software was quite intuitive. We were able to figure out how to get everything to work quite easily. The girls designed a model in Azure Machine Learning Studio that can predict breast cancer. So that's pretty impressive, right? Um, and that students learning that. And one thing I'd like to say to you today is your curriculums, whether you're in university, schools, um, they can't catch up, okay? So the, the curriculums that we do in digital technologies are not going quickly enough ahead. Your teachers don't have the time and the um, skill sets to go in depth into a lot of different areas of computer science. So it's really important that you take control of your own learning. Everybody in this room could create the next million dollar idea. Right? And we're going to look at some of those later on. But what I mean when I'm talking about AI and machine learning, take this for example. Does anybody know what animal that is? What do you think? Go on. Sort of, yeah. It's a snow leopard, okay? They are becoming extinct. 
and it's very hard to track the numbers of them across the globe. There's about 5,000 of them, and they're scattered everywhere. So it's really hard to find them. So how can we use machine learning to kind of drive that? So we've invented the machine learning uh, APIs and all of the kind of technology that goes with it, but it's the application which is important. How can you use it? So this is using our APIs to look at images and kind of check for those images. Because at the minute, to count um, snow leopards, you've got to actually vi put video cameras in the field, leave them there, and then go through the footage. And it takes forever. There's some guys there um, doing that footage at the minute. But these snow leopards could appear anywhere. Anybody see the snow leopard? Yay. See there? Yeah? They don't normally stand for selfies like we did earlier on. What about in the dark and behind the signpost? Yeah? What about in the snow? See the snow leopard there? No, nope, it's a deer. Um, see there in a blurry image, really low res image? There it is. It's his tail at the bottom, right? So you've got to think about the different ways to capture it. There's one in the top left. No, it's not. It's, a, it's an otter. Um, obviously, there's one smiling for a nice selfie. So you can see the difficulty that we've got. Can you see the snow leopard there? Obviously there, yeah? So AI and machine learning has to look through lots of images and lots of footage in lots of different um, contexts, right? So it's really important there's another one there looking at us. But then it's not just one video you're looking at. You're looking at hundreds and possibly thousands of video feeds. So what can we do to kind of support with that? We can use Microsoft Cognitive Services to actually drive some of those results and actually look for those um, uh, things. So this is an example, howall.net. You've probably seen some of these, right? Um, this gives you my gender and my age. So that's Microsoft technology, but you can go out tomorrow and create something, an application that can picture somebody's age and gender. So think about a million dollar app. Is this something you can think about? When I talk to students, I go to schools and talk to schools about this technology quite a bit. Um, some students said, uh, some girls said to me, we could have a station platform or an area in the station that only lets females in after 10 o'clock at night, like a safe area on a st uh, station. Or maybe a bar. You know, if you're 18, it lets you in. If you're not, it doesn't, for example. So it's the ideas behind the technology, which is where the million dollar ideas are. Microsoft's very much a company of platforms. If you think about Xbox, we create an Xbox, we sell that, but people make money on top of that, yeah? So we make millionaires and billionaires of people developing stuff on our platform. So the games developers, the software developers, okay? So what, what apps can you think of which can check, check, check um, gender and age? What about similarities of pictures? That's how similar I am to Gareth Bale world's best soccer player, right? But um, according to me, being Welsh. But um, what ideas could you have? Macquarie University came up with an idea around this API, which is an API is an interface that connects with our stuff with your stuff, right? Um, so basically, they do something to stop cheating in exams. Compare a passport photo to a photo on file, because there's lots of people that kind of go in and do exams for each other in universities. Um, so can you think of an example where you can match that? That's the technology we also use for the snow leopard, right? So it's up to you to think about these. How about emotional APIs? We can tell. I would do a live demo here, but the presentation's coming from the back there. But I could tell you if you're happy or sad right now based on your facial expressions, right? You, I could put the camera across. I could put the HoloLens on, one of our VR units, and I could look out at you, and I could find information about you if I wanted to. I could get it to search and say, ah, I know that person, they go to that school, or they're that happy, or they're sad, okay? And you start to kind of converse across ethical boundaries as well when you're using these technologies. And that's why my opening statement about why technology companies are doing what they're doing is really important, because if Microsoft were gonna use your photographs to sell your stuff and advertise, then you wouldn't have as much faith in using our technology, for example, if you were using it um, in a security setting, in an airport, for example, where every time somebody comes through, we'd be taking those photographs and process them in a different country under different legislations and kind of storing your uh, facial recognition data. This is really, really important. When we're talking about AI and machine learning, really important that we think about ethics and standards and why companies are doing what they're doing. So hopefully everybody in the room has got a million dollar app 
that they've developed now, right? If you haven't, think of one by the end of the day. Email me. Send me a post on Twitter or Instagram. Tell me what it is. And let's try to make it a reality. But also, where our platforms are going are very much around mixed reality. If you've got a Windows device, which I hope a lot of you have, some people have got those uh, MacBook devices as well, but Windows devices um, all have got embedded 3D and mixed reality into them, okay? So any Windows 10 device that you have now, and you have a student in um, Australia, uh, you have access to all the Office software for free, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Sway, Flow, all of those, Homes. Um, you get access to all of that for free, and you get access to Windows 10, okay? It's an educational benefit that you would departments and schools buy into. But all of this 3D content that we are demoing on the stands out there, you can put that into mixed reality. You can do your own 3D. So the old paint, if you remember that, you can actually do 3D paint now. You can also embed, um, a, you can, there's a 3D scan app inside Windows 10 that allows you to connect an Xbox sensor to it and then actually scan objects in 3D. So you can actually scan a bottle, for example, edit it in Paint 3D, push it into Minecraft, pull worlds out of Minecraft, view them in mixed reality um, against the background, like that. So you can do that now. You can embed all your 3D models inside PowerPoint in Word and all that kind of stuff. So that's all available now, right? And you can create your own 3D models and prototypes using our technology. Right where she kicks her... Um, I'm just going to go back to that slide, actually. Just jumped across a bit quickly. Let me go back one. Um, I'm going to show you a video how we've embedded that also into video. So we've used artificial intelligence in your Photos app inside um, uh, Windows 10 to be able to use AI and video footage and 3D together. And you can do this today. If you've got a Windows 10 PC, put it on, open it up, type in Photos, and go to the Photos app, and this is what you can do. Right where she kicks her soccer ball, Okay, now let's put the fireball in the project, move it over to the, fireball, or the soccer ball, and then I'm gonna anchor it to the object. Let's see how this looks. Aha, here's an explosion that'll do. Let's place it in my project, move it into the goal. Let's watch it. I've shared with you today is available now, right? You can create mixed reality applications. You can use 3D to enhance presentations. You can create 3D to enhance any prototyping you're doing. You can start to really um, go from scanning something in with wi free Windows 10 stuff to actually printing that out on the 3D printer using 3D Builder application built into Windows 10, right? So you can do that now. You can buy a $300 3D printer and you're kind of away to go. When we look in at mixed reality though, this is where we are heading with it. And it's called HoloLens. We've just released HoloLens 2. So this is out at the minute. Penny walks in on location. She has to set up the space for a product unveil for a group of clients. Enter Microsoft HoloLens, the world's first untethered holographic computer. The device maps the room in order to construct a digital map of the space, allowing Penny to fill the room with holograms. What you see here is next generation hand tracking. Penny moves the holograms throughout the room in real time and space. The boxes react using physics-based simulations, just like they would in the real physical world. Sorry Penny, this may be a bad time, but the client is on an earlier flight. <laughs> We're so not ready. Should we start to panic? Not yet, just bring the team in, please. Windows brings spatial sound, articulated hand tracking, and Samir's own hands into VR. I can see you're hard at work, Samir, but Penny needs your help. Yeah, sure thing, just let me check out this bunker real quick. Samir, the client is on. As per usual, your sense of timing is just awesome. Kai-san, Penny ga yonde imasu kedo. Imasu ga yonde imasu Kai joins the conversation as a hologram. Samir also appears as a 3D avatar, which he scanned himself using his phone. Cute. I try. So, how's it coming? It's not. 
This is the flagship store. It's gotta be, it's gotta be unforgettable. Yeah, not exactly blowing my hair back. Yeah, the space is driving me nuts. All right, how about a change of scenery? Welcome to Think Club. Imagine the web of the future where you can draw inspiration from the cloud in three dimensions and all around you. Some inspiration, please. Namaste. These bots help them interface with businesses. This one helps them find amazing 3D assets. Kai uses a pen and Samir uses a specialized controller in order for them both to manipulate and design the 3D creation. The team forgets that they are not together physically as they continue collaborating on the design. Penny picks up the eyedropper to grab a colour from the physical ceiling in order to make things feel more anchored. Through the conversational bot, we see a real-time translation of what Penny's client is saying. Impressive. That went well. We've just released HoloLens 2, got a holographic processor in it, um, and it's very different to VR. It's called mixed reality, and it interacts with the environment. So you can create, using Unity, applications and games for that. You can dial into that, like Skype, um, as well. So it's really interesting how all of these things are connecting. So we've gone from machine learning, artificial intelligence, creativity, um, mixed reality, 3D, all of these things together. There's a lot of stuff that Microsoft do. Okay, end-to-end -end solutions for lots of things. Um, but where we're going is that intelligent edge and the intelligent cloud. So with the intelligent cloud, like I showed you earlier on, which is ours is called Azure, um, then with that, you've got intelligent edge, edge devices. We've released the Connect sensor for Xbox for um, the intelligent edge and uh, IoT, so the Internet of Things. So really, really interesting. The technology is kind of there. What I suggest you do is really think about taking control of your own learning, okay? Go to Microsoft Learn, put that into your search engine of your choice, whether it's Google or Bing. Um, download Unity to start developing some 3D games apps. Start to make sure you've got Windows 10 at home to kind of drive some of that creativity. Set up an Azure account, um, and also start thinking about blogging and your CVs, okay? Think about the technologies of the future and how you are gonna use those and what ideas you've got and share them with everybody. Okay, because that's what employers like Microsoft will look at. What have you been doing more are you interested in? And make sure you start to think about putting your online experiences and the things you're doing on things, something like LinkedIn. Okay, so that's me. Hopefully you got some takeaways there. Take some photos of those. Um, watch the video back at some time. But hopefully that's inspired you and you are the future. Okay, ultimately it's really important that you all go out to today, all the sessions today, thinking about what you actually are going to do and what you can do because everybody can do stuff using technology. Okay. There's a couple of questions. Do we have time for any questions? One or two? Okay. Um, I can't not confirm or deny anything around our partnership with Nintendo, but um, there is an interesting connectivity with all of our Xbox Live stuff in the back end. It's usually the other parties, though, like the Nintendos and the Playstations of the world that don't really want to play with us in that space because it weakens their value proposition on hardware. But the one to look out in the games industry is, is where uh, Microsoft Project, Project xCloud, which, which is where we move in a lot of our games online, a bit like Google have announced today. Mixed reality HoloLens, yeah. No, it'll it you just it'll it work with anybody's hand. It's got connect sensor bar on it. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can use gravity, you can use Unity, and we've got all of the materials to learn how to code for that, all online, freely available. Um, those ones, that's a developer edition, that's about four grand. It's like a high-end PC. Ooh, lots of questions. The hologram ones, they're about four grand. They we released HoloLens 2 now. But you can do mixed reality with any Windows-based laptop, so check them out on the stands there and have a bit of a play. Lots of questions, but ask our teams out there. One, one more, you keep saying one more, one more, one more. Go on there. Uh, yeah, you had your hand up earlier on. Oh. Yep. Oh. I'm an account technology strategist, so I look at the future and help customers kind of um, uh, plan for three years ahead. Last one, last one. <laughs> cool. What's the coolest thing that you've created with Unity? Um, I think mixed reality apps. Um, the, you know, there's really good games you can create with Unity. So I love using the Unity kind of pre-made games and then putting those into mixed reality. So give it a crack. Cool. Thanks, everybody.